I'm Carrie, and today I'm going to read to you from a book I wrote called Stories of the Saints with pictures by Nick Thornborough. And the story we're going to read today is about Catherine of Alexandria. When Catherine was a girl, she loved to learn so much that her father, the governor of Alexandria, gave her a special tower in the palace just for books. And he hired the seven greatest teachers in the kingdom to come and teach her. Catherine would have been happy to stay there and learn forever. But when she was just 14, her father died and Catherine became queen. Her subjects were worried because she didn't have a king. Why don't you get married? They asked. We don't need to invite a stranger to rule us, she told them. With your help, I'll rule the kingdom wisely and well. Then her uncle spoke up. You're so smart and so beautiful and so rich and so powerful, he said. It would be a shame if you didn't get married and have smart, beautiful, rich, powerful children. I'll tell you what, Catherine told the leaders of Alexandria. This is the kind of man I could marry. He needs to be so powerful that I'll know I didn't make him king by marrying him. So great all creatures need him, but he doesn't need them. So beautiful that angels celebrate whenever they see him. Richer than any other man. And so meek that he forgives anyone who does him wrong. No woman has ever had a husband like that, her mother told Catherine. Is all your learning driving you mad? Pick a man and marry him like all of your ancestors have done. I won't have any husband but a man like that, Catherine said. In Alexandria, everyone thought Catherine was crazy. But out in the desert, Mary, the mother of Jesus, appeared to a hermit named Adrian while he was praying in his cell. Go to Catherine, she told him, and tell her to get dressed for her wedding. But Catherine lives in the palace, Adrian said, trembling with fear. How will I ever get in? The angel of the Lord will lead you, Mary told him. So Adrian went into town, straight to the castle. When he got to the big barred castle doors, they swung open for him, all on their own. So did the next set of doors he came to inside the castle. Adrian kept walking through door after door. Every single one swung open before he even touched it until he found Catherine in her secret study and gave her Mary's message. When Catherine heard it, she didn't hesitate. She followed Adrian straight out of the palace, through the dark city and into the moonlit desert. But out in the desert, Catherine noticed that they seemed to be wandering in circles. Also, Adrian was muttering to himself. What's wrong? Catherine asked him. I'm just praying, Adrian told her, because I'm afraid we're lost. I can't find my home. Catherine looked around. On a hill nearby was a beautiful monastery. What's that? She asked. You found it, Adrian said. This is the place I was told to bring you. Inside the monastery, they found a crowd of people dressed all in white with crowns of white lilies on their heads. They were all so beautiful that Catherine and Adrian fell down in wonder. Get up, the people said. You're welcome here. In the next room, Catherine and Adrian found people clothed in purple with crowns of red roses on their heads. They were so beautiful that Catherine and Adrian fell down again. Don't be afraid, the people said. You're welcome here. The people led them to a chapel where Mary sat, dressed like a queen, surrounded by saints and angels who sang songs that Catherine and Adrian had never heard. Do you remember the husband you described, Mary asked Catherine. Yes, Catherine said. It will be as you desire, Mary told her, but you must be baptized. So Adrian baptized Catherine with Mary as her godmother. Then Mary led Catherine to meet Jesus, who was surrounded by a great crowd of angels. I'll never leave you, Jesus told Catherine. I'll always comfort and strengthen you. Everyone around them began to sing. Then Catherine woke up. The heavenly scenes had all been a vision, 
but she really was in the desert. When she looked around, she found herself in a rough monk cell, surrounded by dry ground for miles and miles. Catherine had to walk for days to get back to her palace. When she got home, she discovered that the emperor, Maxentius, had arrived in Alexandria, and he was persecuting anyone who believed in Jesus. Catherine marched into the emperor's court and started to debate him. She had so much learning that Maxentius couldn't come up with a single argument that Catherine couldn't demolish with her logic and knowledge. So Maxentius sent for 50 of the best pagan philosophers in the land. But the pagan philosophers didn't fare any better against Catherine than Maxentius had. We can't beat her, one of them told Maxentius. In fact, we all want to become Christians. So Maxentius ordered that all his philosophers be burned on a pyre in the center of the city. Then he asked Catherine to marry him. Just give up your faith, he told her. You can be my queen. All the people in the kingdom will adore you as a goddess. Catherine refused, so he threw her in jail, where she was beaten with the stinging tails of scorpions. Maxentius already had a wife, and when he went away for a few days, she came to talk with Catherine. When the queen got there, Catherine's cell was shining with light, and the queen saw an angel binding up Catherine's wounds. Jesus also stood beside Catherine, saying, I am with you. The queen knew she wanted to follow Jesus, too. So did Maxentius's favorite advisor, Porphyry, who had come with her to the prison, and the 200 knights who protected the queen, who had all been listening in. When Maxentius got back from his travels, he expected Catherine to be starving because he had ordered that no one should give her any food. But Jesus had sent doves to Catherine, who fed her heavenly food in prison. She was as healthy and beautiful as ever. This made Maxentius so angry that he decided to kill her. He had two wheels made of iron, spiked with razors that turned against each other so that anyone who was put on the wheel would be cut to pieces. Please, his queen told him, don't, don't hurt her. So Maxentius had the queen put to death. I'm a Christian too, said Porphyry, the king's favorite advisor. So are we, said the 200 knights in unison. Maxentius had all of them beheaded and ordered their bodies fed to dogs. Then he went to Catherine's prison cell. If you give up your faith, he said, you can still be my queen. If not, I'll chop off your head. Do whatever you think, Catherine told him. I'm ready. As the soldiers came to put her on the wheel, Catherine prayed. The instant she touched the wheel, an angel appeared and smashed it into pieces. Iron and razors flew everywhere, injuring the crowd that had gathered to see her execution. So Maxentius finally had Catherine beheaded. Angels carried her body to the top of Mount Sinai and a stream of oil flowed from her, which healed everyone who touched it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>